Oh, welcome, you wonderful humans, to a brand new video. I am out. We are out on an early morning spin, early morning pedal this morning. I'll get into a little bit why I've got an appointment later on, but ouch. Just doing a little kind of rest day, recovery day, freshen up spin. Just gonna ride for like 40, 40, 50 minutes this morning. And, it's, and yeah, guys, my, my legs. My legs, they're so sore. Backed up Sunday's race with another five hour ride yesterday. If you watched my video yesterday, if you didn't, why? Go and watch it right now. So after the accumulation of those two days, today my body is like, no. Got out this morning pre-breakfast, which after two hard days, after two back-to-back -back big days, it's probably not ideal. This is the time that your body's kind of craving food and, and you need to be recovering and eating well. But because I had to get out early, if I was to get out early and eat breakfast as well, to allow my food time to digest a little bit, I would have had to get up at like six o'clock. So it's kind of a trade off between sleeping more and having breakfast. And I'm just doing 40 or 50 minutes. So I, uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. By the time I get home and get some food, I should be all G. So it is Tuesday today. And it's the first day after the Easter holidays that everyone's back to work and stuff. So it's nice to get out early in the lanes before the madness begins before the rush hour begins and also it makes a change riding down this road this particular road through the fields and there being no wind normally you're riding down here you're in the gutter but 7 a.m 7 a.m there's no cars there's no there's no wind there's no nothing just a couple of uh just a couple of magpies crows not not magpies i do know that let me go please open open it's a little bit colder this morning, guys. It doesn't feel right putting arm warmers on. But uh, the sun is there. Oh, you can't see it because of the trees. But the sun is there. It's just currently hiding behind a few clouds. But yeah, hopefully the sun comes out later on. It's going to be another, another mega day. But boy, do my legs feel tired today? It's hard, like when you're doing a recovery ride. It's almost, what is this helmet situation, guys? Uh, it's hard to almost go as easy as you should, as you should do. Like it's so, it's so easy to just not press on, but to ride at like 200 watts or or whatever. Whereas when you're doing a recovery ride, you know, I'm trying to keep it to like 150, 160. And uh, especially, man, especially when you're going like a little incline or a hill, that's quite hard to do. That's quite hard to do. A little tactic that I've employed though is uh, just keep it in the little ring. All right, 56 minutes, that'll do. I don't think I've got the gas today to do another four minutes to make it one hour. All right guys, so we are now in the car. Breakfast has been done, the ride's been done. I'm on my way to Chorley. The reason I had to ride earlier this morning is because I'm heading for a massage. I'm gonna go get a sports massage. I haven't had one for probably, I don't know, six months, eight months, a long time. So I feel like I'm in need of a sports massage, especially with uh, some big raises coming up. I think it'll be beneficial. I decided to ride it's always better to ride before you have a massage. So that's why I went out so early this morning because uh, you know I didn't want to go I didn't want to go have my massage and go home and, and then have to ride. It's you know it's better for the body to just rest after you've had a like a deep tissue massage. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. The lights have turned green, so I'm gonna put my camera away. Oh man. Ugh. You always feel like you always feel so tired and sleepy after a, after a sports massage but i just had a a one hour massage and i can honestly tell you that was very 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 painful i really need to get i really need to start getting into the habit more of coming like getting a sports massage because they're so beneficial for you or i like, i think they're so beneficial for me anyway i definitely go a lot better and just recover so much more i guess effectively from having a sports massage uh, and I think the last one that I had was probably I don't know I want to say eight months ago once you can get over that like initial shock of the pain they're actually uh, pretty pretty relaxing anyway time to go home one of the most important things to do after getting a massage is rehydrating No, I feel sick. All right, guys, so I'm gonna bring you some quality. Oh my, cut myself shaving. Oh my God, do you reckon I'm gonna lose too much blood? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, I'm gonna bring you guys some quality cycling content today on the YouTube channel. This microphone, this microphone that I'm using right now on my iPhone 
is great. The quality is so, so much better than the iPhone, like the original iPhone microphone, but there is still, oh, I wonder if there's something in here. We still have a little bit of an issue with the sound, of, well, with the wind, with the sound of the wind. So I need to come up with some sort of way to create like a wind muff for the microphone. I mean, I can buy one, but for a start, they're expensive. And it's just such a basic kind of thing. And you know, I don't want to spend extra money because this microphone already cost me a stupid amount of money. So I've got an idea. I'm going to make myself one. All right, that's the ticket. This is an old wind muff off an old microphone. And I think, it, I think it's going to be perfect. So for this operation, we're going to need some sort of furry cover. I'm using an old wind muff. Pair of scissors and a hair bobble or an elastic band or something if you've got a sister or a, or a girlfriend. Hair bobbles are uh, pretty easy to find. So, the audio quality might decrease a little bit since I just took the microphone out. This is, this is it here with the wind muff that comes with it. That thing's useless. That thing's useless. So what we're going to do is cut. All right, let's work this out. We don't want to cut too much. Just enough go over the microphone. I'm going to go about about here, about here, I reckon. The thing is, we can always cut it shorter and shorter, but we can't go back on ourselves once we cut it too short. So with the new wind muff, what we can even do, right, if this is, if this is going to work, we can even cut it down a little bit because like these furry bits don't need to be that long and it'll make it seem a lot smaller. We're just gonna push that onto the end there. And then finally, we're gonna take, we're gonna take said hair bubble and wrap it around a few times. And we're gonna get this thing nice and tight, nice and tight. All right, that's pretty secure. There you go, guys. DIY, DIY wind muff. Now I need to plug this back in and let's go and give it a test. All right, so guys, it's pretty windy today. I'm on the mountain bike. Uh, and for reference, I'm heading into a headwind. Hopefully this homemade wind muff is doing a good job and you can't hear too much wind, or ideally any wind. If you can then, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And now I've turned around on the road and I'm heading back the other way. Got a little bit of a tailwind behind me. I'm probably riding at about 10 miles per hour. I'm gonna speed it up to about 15 or 20. And hopefully still this is doing a good job and you can't hear too much wind. And you can hear my you can hear my my voice as clear as day. Please just work. Okay, so upon upon reviewing the footage, it definitely definitely seems like an improvement. The only thing is, I don't know if you can see in the mirror, it looks a little bit daft having that big like furry thing on the end of my phone. But at the end of the day, the idea is to just have it on for when I'm riding, like at all other times, and like I really I don't need it. Come on then. Come on. Are we going for a walk? Are we going for a walk? <laughs> you always should do a 360 when you want to go for a walk. You want to go for a walk? See, <laughs> it's just a three... Why are you doing 360s? Why are you doing 360s? You are a good girl, aren't you? Hey, don't you run off. Don't you run off. Otherwise, I'll put you on a lead, mate. All right, be free. Be free with the birds and the horses. Let's hope that today there is not, oh, let's straighten her up a little bit. Let's hope today the horses are feeling nice and they want to be our friends because the other day they didn't, they didn't want to be our friend and they were pissed off I was in their field for sure. All right, I'm going to try and find somewhere to prop my phone up because I want to have a little bit of a conversation with the camera. You know what? You know what? I'm just going to sit here on this little grass verge. Lexi can swim in the water. And, uh, you know, we're all good. We're all good here. I want to start off by saying, you know, in the last couple of months, this channel has grown exponentially. Yeah, and first off, I want to say shout out to everyone who's joined. Joined the crew, joined the family, joined the squad. And also shout out to everyone who's been subscribed before that. But, you know, you continue to show up every single day. Without you guys, you know, we wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be doing this. Oh, no, don't shake, don't shake, don't shake. <laughs> Mother f***. All right, we found a nice little spot here where Lex isn't going to and splash me. Anyway, for the for the new viewers that have joined the channel recently, you're probably sitting there thinking, watching this video, thinking, Cam, who the f are you? Who the f is this guy? Who the f is that guy? And then another portion of the viewers are probably going to be thinking that you're just some bum ass cyclist. You know, that's probably not too far off the accurate the accurate observation. But I thought what I would do is quickly just explain kind of how I got myself into the position that I'm here in today. Yeah, which is stood in the side of the field with my dog talking to a tree. So basically guys, you know, I do this full time now, YouTube uh, and social media. 
is is like is is my job and everything that comes and everything that comes with it is my job but you know my working you know my working life started when i was around 12 years old i think i was 12 and i got a paper round much like a lot of people uh, my local news agents employed me to deliver papers to people's houses every morning but you know i soon figured out that i was getting paid i was getting paid i got paid two pounds two pounds a day or two pounds a morning i did it for like it took me 20 minutes before school uh, and I got paid two pounds to do that. And then if I'd done a full week, which is Monday to Friday, I would get paid an extra two pounds bonus. So then I would, you know, I was basically earning 12 pounds a week to deliver papers every morning for 20 minutes, which might not seem that bad, but you know, I can guarantee you the middle of winter at half past six in the morning, you know, you start to question the, you start to question the two, is, is two pounds worth it? So then a few months down the line, uh, another paper round was going, another, another job vacancy was going. Uh, so I took that on. So then I had two paper rounds to do in the morning and then I was earning 24 pounds a week. My 20 minute round then turned into a 40 minute round. So I was having to start my paper round at around 6 a.m. before before school every morning between Monday and Friday. I did that for about a year and then by the time I finished my paper round, I was doing I was doing three rounds. It was taking me around an hour, an hour each morning for you mathematicians out there. I was earning 36, <laughs> Sam's having a poo. I was earning 36 pounds a week. Why, Sam, why, why are you so dirty? Look, it's just, all right, the camera doesn't really show it up too well, but he's just covered in sh Anyway, anyway. 36 pounds a week as a 14 year old child. It's all right, but I was, you know, I was wanting more. I was wanting more. I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I was not satisfied with that 36 pounds. So on a Saturday morning, I started delivering leaflets. So the same sort of thing uh, for a local courier company that delivered uh, leaflets around my village and also like the surrounding area where I live. So I started doing that and I was earning five pounds an hour. It was basically eight hours on a Saturday. So that combined with my paper round, you know, when I was 14 years old, it wasn't too bad. I wasn't, I was a little 14 year old baller in my, uh, in my, in my school. So from that, I raised a little bit of money and then I started buying things from China and selling them on eBay for a little bit of a profit. Uh, what I, the things that I was selling was like iPhone cases, charger cables, random little toys and gadgets, anything. I would literally scour the internet for hours every evening to find things that I could buy as cheap as possible in China and sell them for as much money as possible in the UK via eBay and I would basically buy anything that was decent quality and I could make a profit on it. It started getting quite big and I was doing pretty well. I was basically earning a full-time wage whilst I was in high school. I remember because I managed to buy myself an iPhone and um, a stages power meter, which at the time were a thousand pounds. So, and let me tell you, the, th the first time you buy something like that yourself, it's the most satisfying, kind of rewarding feeling you will, you'll, you know, you will ever get. I think. So there was me, 15-year-old Cameron, just bought myself a power meter, just bought myself a new iPhone, um, and I was selling quite a lot of stuff whilst whilst I was in high school. I was making a decent amount of money, and then Loom Bands got launched. If you don't know what Loom Bands are, just go and go and Google them. They're basically just like little coloured elastic bands and I was the first person in the UK to kind of see this trend come in. So I bought a, I bought a container load from China and then launched, put them on eBay and I remember, I rem for a start, because they were brand new, the market was huge so I was making so much profit on each box of loom bands that I sold. And I also remember I sold out, um, I bought like, I bought like a, I bought like a shipment of 200 boxes of loom bands or something and I remember those 200 boxes selling out in a day. So what did I do? I listed more. Even though I didn't have any, I listed that I had more loom bands for sale to just sell them and sell them and sell them at this high price whilst they're so new to try and make as most money as possible. And then this soon turned around to bite me in the butt because um, I ordered more from China, but the delivery time from China is about three or four weeks. And once people's items aren't getting delivered within the first three or four days they start making claims with ebay basically long story short about 200 people launched a claim with ebay then basically ebay thought i was a scammer they didn't give me any any time or reason to explain myself despite being you know a, a platinum seller on ebay and having like 10,000 positive feedbacks uh they just shut my account down and banned me from ebay so <laughs> that was the end of my my ebay kind of business i did uh try and relaunch myself on amazon but yeah, it never, it never really took off. So that was the end of that. I started working again part-time at a local factory that are a manufacturing company, just literally sitting on the production line. Yeah, it was a, it was a very sedentary job to go alongside my cycling. It was perfect, but it was the most draining and the most boring thing that I have ever done. I then started this YouTube journey, managed to grow it a little bit and, and then create, you know, a bit of an income off of this, 
off of this platform and you know I'm, I'm very thankful that I'm now able to stop doing that crappy job in the factory and I can turn this YouTube thing into like my full-time job. I haven't talked about this I don't think at all in the vlog like kind of my past and, and like how I've got to this position that, that, that I've got to today. But I thought now would be a perfect opportunity with all of the new viewers coming to the channel uh, that I can, you know, introduce those guys and also explain to my older viewers where like my past and where I've, where I've kind of come from. Hey Lexi, because every now and again, you know, you get these view, you get these comments that say you're just a bum, go and get a job. You've never worked a day in your life. And um, I just, I've just held off from rep replying to those comments. And I thought that, you know, when the time's right, would make a video so guys that's that's kind of what i've done up until my ripe age of 22 yeah if you are new if you do happen to be watching this video for the first time feel free to subscribe we make videos every single day at 4 p.m g m t about training about racing bikes about traveling about lifestyle oh which by the way me and tim have got some cool travel plans coming up very very soon so stay tuned for that guys but that's going to be the end of today's video thank you for watching thank you for all the support thank you for all the thumbs up and uh, i'll see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m peace